If we're going to do any development with OpenAPI, getting in under the hood, doing application development, we're very likely to absolutely need to get into the playground. That's really the next step. And so we might find ourselves here because we're thinking about implementing this in maybe our website. Maybe we're building a chat bot. Maybe we're using this to scrub data. Any of those cases, really anything where we're going to programmatically use OpenAI systems, we're going to get into the playground. And let's let's do that right now. Okay. Now, a few considerations that we have for this. So the first thing we need to realize is that there is, in fact, a price associated with this. Okay. And so what we have is on the lower right hand side, we have some discussion about pricing. Okay. So whenever we're interfacing using the API and also the playground, we are going to be burning tokens. And the tokens are proportional roughly to the number of words we have. So we're given a maximum of 4,000 tokens. And that means that we can use about 3,000 words. So 4,000 tokens equals about 3,000 words. And so I'm going to go ahead and click learn more about pricing. Okay. So uh, they, they're they talking here about Dolly. That's the uh, image system. But then they get into the different language models. And I'm going to take myself off screen. So you can see. So Ada, which is the fastest, is the least expensive. And then we have Babbage, Curie, and DaVinci. And what we need to recognize about this is DaVinci is significantly expensive. It's two cents per 1,000 tokens, okay? And then Curie is a tenth the cost, okay? And Ada is even less than that, okay? So uh, what I've found, my experience is we're going to probably start with DaVinci and Curie just to do testing. And then we want to actually play with the different language models. For most of my purposes, I actually find that DaVinci works well. But that's because I'm in uh, a specific discipline where DaVinci just has way more of the training that I'm going to be building off of. But uh, Ada, Babbage, Curie are very, very powerful in their own right. And what we do want to do is we want to do some testing to see which language model is going to work best for us. So we do absolutely need to be mindful of the pricing. Okay, That is a requirement uh, because uh, we certainly don't want to be oblivious to the fact that we are going to be spending money when we're in this playground. So those different language models that we saw, Ada, Babbage, Curie, DaVinci, those are available to us over here. And there's some really good descriptions that we'll take you through for the different language models. Okay, so let's go over Ada first. Okay, uh, Ada is the fastest model and lowest cost. It's good at parsing text, text classification, uh, uh, address correction, and keywords. So address correction, like think about uh, you are getting people's address for um, a rebate check or something like that, and you have to process a lot of addresses. This would be a good way to go. Okay. Then we have Babbage. Uh, it's good at classification, and we're going to be able to explore classification when uh, when we're discussing these things. And classification is an incredibly powerful thing, okay? And they even have some examples for classification. So we'll go down to classification, and I'm just gonna go here, and, uh, and this will tell us things like the category of a particular company. So we're asking it, hey, what's the category for Apple? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and submit. And it says it's a technology company. So that's what they mean by category. And it said that 
Turing. was good at classification. So let's see how well Curie does with the same option. Technology, okay? Would Ada be able to do that? And when they fail, they fail pretty miserably, so this is a pretty good sign. I wouldn't want to use Ada as my language model for classification, okay? but. You got to play around with it, okay? We have broad strokes, descriptions of the different language models, but they, they all do uh, surprise us from time to time, okay? So that's our language models, which controls our pricing, okay? And the amount of tokens that we're going to burn is going to be really two things, okay? It's going to be the amount of text that is in the window and the amount of text that it is going to spit out. And it will answer based on this maximum length. So that also is gonna burn tokens, okay? Because ultimately when we look at ChatGPT uh, and we look at GPT-3 and the playground, it's really prompt plus completion, okay? It's gonna take the beginning of some text, and it's going to say, what's a really good creative way to complete that? That's ultimately, if you boil it down, what's going on. But both prompt and completion are going to consume tokens for you, okay? So this actually can really add up. But if you want to control the length of that response, you're going to control it with not the temperature. You're going to control it with the maximum length, okay? the maximum length you get to control. And you can sometimes, let's say, this is this is gonna expect a really short answer, right? But if we were saying, hey, build a verbose recipe for me, then I wouldn't want it to have a maximum length of something like 40. So some trial and error there to make sure that we're capping it. And it does mildly constrain uh, the, the engine it, it, in terms of it'll try to actually get it in, okay? It'll try to get it in, but you absolutely can cut it off midway, okay? So that's the length. So that's how to consider pricing. So before you do anything, it's important to understand pricing. Now you're generally gonna get about like $18, $20 of free money to burn with this. And then you're gonna have to, you're really gonna have to buy and set up a plan. Okay, so the first few times you interact with this, it'll be free. Okay, now what is the purpose of this? The purpose ultimately is to build sophisticated capabilities into something that you're going to use. Okay, and how are you going to use this? There's so many different possible applications, but ultimately it's going to come down to you building something in this window, okay, which is going to be your prompt, and then playing uh, the game of submit, which answers to completions. And when you're really satisfied with that, what you then get to do is you get to bake this, and you get to bake this into code. Now, you may not be a coder, okay? And once upon a time, I was a coder, uh, uh, a coder who spent... Uh, thousands of hours building video games. That's mostly what my coding experience is. And did it with with C and C sharp, uh, mostly C++ actually, not so much C sharp. But uh, what happens here when you hit view code, that's what brought this up, is it gives you a code sample, okay? And it's going to give you a code sample in Python. You can also do node.js, uh, curl, okay, or JSON. But really, we're, we're probably going to start off with Python. And I've found that it is incredibly easy to implement this in your, uh, in your system, okay? It's really easy to uh, download Python and get to work with it. Now here they're showing us the open API key, okay?
okay? So the open API key is a key that you can find right here, okay? So I have a key that was created A key that was created, and you can see that right here. And uh, I'm not going to show the whole key, okay? But you'd copy that, and you'd bring that in to your code sample, okay? So we were over here in the classification view code, and so that that API key could literally just be paste it in as the open API key. And that's that's where we get that. Here, we have an environment variable, OK? So you can set it up as an environment variable, which is good, because if you're showing your code samples, you absolutely have to not share that API key with anybody. It's basically a recipe to burn your money, OK? Um, because anybody with that API key can use it for their open API calls, okay? So that's really important to keep secret and safe. But here, what do we see? It uh, identified we're going to be using DaVinci, but if I change that, it would represent and reflect that change. It's got our prompt, okay? So it's got our prompt. And so you could build this in to your Python IDE or IDLE, and you'd be good to go. That's really some of the most immediately available power to working inside of the playground. Tinker around with it. And then you're like, this is actually something that I could use. This is something that I could use for my own purposes. This is something my organization could use to empower a different group or maybe its underlying platform or help out the coders perform uh, uh, data scrubbing. So many different applications. So come into the playground and uh, experiment with it. They've got really good examples to go, okay, so what are they doing here, okay? It does take a little bit to get acclimated, by the way. It's not quite as easy and intuitive as the uh, chat GPT but it is more powerful.